Well, summertime is a particularly fantastic time for fishing particles. The carp absolutely love them. Just come down to Layer Pit today just for a few hours. I've been popping down here a bit recently. Just for a few hours here and there just to get a bit of action, you know, it's a great place for that. Obviously there's loads of other places like this all around the country. Fantastic for sport. Um, as I say, I've been using a few of the old bait zone bits and bobs recently. Just um, ready-made particles that you don't have to mess about with. I'm going to get this one in. Hopefully if I get it in. <laughs> it's a bit of a nutter. Um, I'll show you a few bits and bobs. Oh, there we go, just see the old bloodworm dumbbell sticking out of its mouth there. <laughs> well, there you go, this one's got an absolutely mint mouth on it. Hook there, sort of almost in the top lip. Been messing about with hook baits today, mainly been using maize or maples, but um, I just thought I'd give half a bloodworm dumbbell a go. So it's got a little bit more scent than the actual particles. And that was literally, well, I hadn't even put the bobbin on, <laughs> and it was off, so. Definitely worked, I'll definitely be putting another one of them out. Well, there we go, give that one about 14 pound, I reckon. Pretty pristine condition, other than that little mark on the side there. Might just be an old spawning mark or something like that. Anyway, no time to talk, it's all about hauling. Get this out, and uh, I haven't got that rod out, which is pretty poor, I should have had that out before I got this out. There we go, let's crack on. Oh no, the buzzer well on. <laughs> I had dropped my right hand rod a bit shorter because uh, the spot out at range had gone a bit quiet. There's been a lot of fish showing short. So I put three spots out on the spot, left it half hour, then put a rod on it. I must have left that there 40 minutes, didn't have a bite, and I had a couple of bites on the long range spot in the meantime. So I thought, right, that's it, that longer rod's going out. Went out there and it went the other side of the spot. I just swapped the rods over and <laughs> it was away. Here we go. You will go in that net. <laughs> Bit of a messy old netting. But it's in there in the end. That's what matters. That's pretty much the average stem. Low double. <laughs> Come on, mate, I'm putting you back. There we go. Well, I've run out of the spot mix that I was using, so I'm just going to knock some more up for you. Um, as I said, I'm using the bait zone particles. Got a couple of different ones. What I tend to do is, because I've only been coming for a few hours, I'll just mix up what I need at home beforehand. Obviously, the great thing about these is, you know, you can chuck these buckets in your car and they're there just in case you do run out during a session if you're on a longer session and you need more bait. Um, you've got two different mixes here. You've got like the spod particle mix, which has just got pretty much every particle under the sun in there. No nuts in there, obviously that's quite important because a lot of water's banned nuts these days, so you haven't got any problems with that there. And these particles are actually PVA friendly, um, so you can use them in your PVA bags without any problems, and they also keep for a very, very long time. Even though you've got like these big buckets, you don't need to use it all at once. Um, you can use your bits and bobs as and when you please. So the spot mix I've been using today, I've been using a bit of everything actually. Um, so you've got the hemp, chilli and corn in there. Not a massive amount of maize in there. Sorry, I said corn, but it is maize. Um, and that, to be honest with you, is the best way you fish it. Um, I found that when you've got tons and tons of maize in there, it doesn't work quite as well. And obviously when you're fishing a little maize hook bait over the top, that's just ideal. You've just got a few of them scattered about here and there. So, a couple of kilos of that. About a kilo of the particle mix, roughly. <laughs> Look at that, it's all sticky and lovely. And then I put some of this one in. This is the, uh, the ground bait spod mix. You can use it, all of these you can use as they are, straight out of the tub. Um, but this one, what I like to use is mix it in there. Uh, reason being, well, for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it will stop any spod spill. Um, secondly, it'll cloud up and all these different bits and particles will hang in the water at different levels. So you've got like a column of bits and bobs floating about, all that scent and attraction, and it just draws the fish in. And when the fish are in there feeding about and there's other fish swimming by, you know, all this stuff's getting wafted about. <laughs> and it'll be a bite. <laughs> so all that stuff's getting wafted about and it just uh, attracts the other fish down onto the spot. And that's what it's all about with these types of waters, is uh, creating a <laughs> creating a bit of a feeding frenzy. 
the more fish you can get out there feeding, the more competition for food, and then the more clumsy they become, and the more bites you get. Well, there we go, another one with a few spawning battle scars. Pop them straight back. As I was saying, there's a, a few different uses for the ground bait in there. The last one that I didn't mention was the fact that I quite often like to put a zig out when I'm spotting. Um, on this sort of water, when there's lots of fish in there, when you get there to start off the day, you know, I'd like to put out a fair bit, a quarter of a bucket or something, just to get the spot working. Now, you know, whilst you're doing that spotting, I find it often pays to wang a little zig out there whilst you're doing it. Um, the amount of fish that come through eating that bait as it's falling through the water because they find it safe, um, it can be an absolutely devastating method and can get you a quick bite at the start of the day. Also, on other times during the day when it goes a little bit quiet, it's also worth doing. It might be a bit hot, you know, and the fish are just raised up in the water and they're not comfortable to feed on the bottom. So, uh, good little tip there and well worth doing. Right, water is next. <laughs> Put a little bit in there. Might be a little bit too much, but I can always add a little bit more ground bait. I'm told that you can also use that ground bait in balls as a method blaster, you know, or just catapulting out balls, but not something I often do, to be honest. I do like a bit of spotting. Well, I reckon that's about right, actually. Could add a little bit more ground bait, but there's enough stodge in there to ensure that you're not going to get any spod spill. A bit of dry stuff in there as well, which just means that we have a bit floating around higher on the surface in the water column and there it is ready to go and uh, it's about time I've done a bit of spotting now actually since I just had a bite let's get on it right just going to top up the spot that is quite important when you're sort of doing this type of fishing just keep it going in little and often speak to any match anglers and they do the same um, another thing that's quite important when you're wanging a spot out just not to overload it if you fill it right up um, it makes it a bit of a funny shape not very aerodynamic and as a result doesn't fly as well so just fill it up to the bottom of the holes on that type of spot but if you always leave yourself sort of an inch and a half gap you should be flying fine <laughs> right probably about eight yards out here so it's not too bad just caught the wind a little bit that one and a little bit right that's another thing just keep your rod tip up as high as you can when you're winding in and it just makes a spot fly across the surface a lot better. As soon as you start dipping that rod, it wants to dig down and makes it look harder work. Right, a couple more of these, and then uh, show you what hook baits I'm using. Now, one thing I always like to do when I'm fishing over a bed of particles is um, vary my hook baits. Don't know why, throughout the day, some hook baits make a difference, so uh, it's always worth playing around with it. Ringing the changes. So I've got a few different ones I've been playing around with today. First of all, I've got half a dumbbell on there, the old bloodworm ones, and then topped off with a little bit of a ziggy pop. They're good them little ziggy pops, um, use them for zig rigs, but also if you're just topping your baits, you know, you can just chop whatever size you want and you've got loads of different colours in there. Anyway, right, what else have we got here? A um, little bit of maize, that one's straight out of the hemp and corn tub or hemp and maize tub. Just picked my hook baits out of there and then just topped off with a little Enterprise, bit of rubber corn, the mini ones, and that one just got I'm not sure, I thought it was a maple, but some kind of bean out of the particle tub. Uh, and again, topped with, with a little bit of enterprise maize. And then on the end there, uh, that one that I caught a fish on earlier. Um, half a dumbbell and a little bit of rubber corn too. Now I wouldn't cast any of these out without a bag because you're just asking for tangles. Um, bag wise, I'll just show you quickly. What I like to do is have a bit of hemp mash in the bottom and then a bit of hemp in the top. Put the hemp mash in the bottom so that you know, you're minimising the chances of your hook getting hooked in a bit of hemp. If it was just a bag of hemp, that could quite easily happen. What you find is a lot of people, most of the lakes you go to, are using stick mixes or pellet mixes, something like that for their bags. Very few people use hemp in their bags, so it's definitely still a massive edge. So that's the bags that have been working for me, but one of my mates has been using the old Bates own maze over here and just using a little bag like that or doing what I was doing, putting a layer of ground bait to pull your hook into, a little bag of them above them. As I say, I don't think they can see a lot out there because it's so silty, but I might be wrong. 
Um, but either way, that's working really well for him. Obviously, again, it's another totally different scenario. Nice, tight little bag of maize. Probably haven't seen it in many lakes at all, so well worth giving a go, that little edge. <laughs> oi, oi. Spooked one there, about 20 yards out. Hit it with a line. <laughs> well, as you can see, there's only, this is my last rod, and the other one's in. Proper bit of uh, hauling action. Ah. Oh. Would come off them, but it's just swimming towards me. And nuts as these fish. One minute they're pulling hard, next minute they're flying at you about a million miles an hour. Well, just a little one, that one. A little layer scamp. <laughs> All good sport, though. Um, right, don't know where I was, but I'm going to show you my rig that I'm using. Nice and simple, bit of supernatural, not less not, and a size 10 choddy hook on there. You know, just keep it simple, and I'm sure you'll catch more fish as a result. The length are very, I mean, where else, the other places I've been fishing around this lake recently have been so silty and not even getting a drop. Whereas out here I'm getting a bit more of a drop, so I'm using sort of eight to eight to 10 inches. Um, whereas before I was actually going sort of 14 inches to combat that silt. As so I'm threading my bag down the hook link and that just ensures that it hooks neatly inside of there and uh, right in amongst that little pile of bait, wherever it lands. So they come up. <laughs> Scoff that, everything's going in, and you've got yourself a bite. Another thing I've found over here lately is the takes are so ferocious that quite often when fishing a lead clip, you'll actually lose the lead. Um, even when pushing the rubbers on pretty far, they just fly off like nutters and they're just banging around, and quite often that lead will fall off. Now, you obviously don't want to be losing leads when you don't have to, um, and just sort of by default, really. Realised one of these pegs fell out as I was using it on a lead clip, and uh, obviously it just turns into a running rig and that means that the lead's not going to fall off because it's not getting bashed about. And also the fish can't use the lead to shake the hook out, so good little system that. As I say, when you're fishing places where you've got no snags or no weed or anything like that, definitely uh, recommend that setup. Lastly, got a, quite a long boom on there. Obviously I'm using a nice supple hook link and uh, I don't want that to tangle on the cast. That just keeps that bit rigid. Um, that's one of the Thinking Anglers ones and underneath that little stick clip just so I can clip that rig on and off easily and get speed fishing. That looks good to go. Got no rods in the water at the moment, so I'll best wing it out. Well, finally, after that little mad spell, I've managed to actually get two rods back out. They say proof's in the pudding. We definitely can't fault the old uh, Bait's own PVA friendly particles. I've got to be honest with you, like a lot of people, I'm sure, I was a little bit dubious when I first saw them on the shelves. I've always liked the fresh particles. But the results I've been having on them over here recently have just been incredible. So I'll definitely be using them in the future. Obviously the fact that you can have them in your car or just at home, you, you know, you never know when you might go fishing. So they're just always there whenever you want them. And also, as I said earlier, the fact that you can use them in PVA, edge in itself, awesome. Well, there you go. How's about that for proof in the pudding? Showing you a few bits of the old bait zone range today. Apply them to your angling and I'm sure you could be hauling just like this. <laughs>